promised you'd quit. Hey, Embrace, uh, good to be with you today. Uh, if you don't know who I am, uh, my name is Travis. I'm one of the pastors here at Embrace. And so just want to welcome you if you're joining us online at one of our campuses or one of our network churches. Like always, we're pumped that you have joined us. Uh, it is graduation season. And so I was thinking back to when I was graduated, which was like last century. It literally was last century, practically. Um, and I was thinking about, you know, for graduation, I got all this graduation cash. And I decided with this graduation cash to buy a DVD player. Now, for those of you under 20, a DVD player is a little box. That you put a disc in, and it shows a picture on the screen. If you don't know what one of those things are. So instead of going to Walmart or to Best Buy to get this DVD player, I decided to get a sweet deal online. Now, once again, I'm old. So when I was in high school, online was not like online now. This was back in the day when getting online sounded like this. We're just going to let this play a little bit, guys, okay? There it came. I have, I have no idea what that meant. There's, I have no idea what that sound meant, but it, it is oddly comforting every time I hear it. It's like, ah, oh, I'm connecting to the world right now. So I decided to go purchase online, but this is before Amazon. And so we had this place where you could, uh, people would put their old stuff and you could bid on it called eBay. I think eBay is still a thing. Is anybody still eBay? A few of you, a few of you still eBay. So I hop on eBay, but here's the deal with eBay. Uh, when I was, back, once again, back in the day, uh, they didn't accept credit cards. And so you had to do this, and this is sketchy. You would send the seller a check. You remember this? Send the seller a check. They would receive the check, cash the check, and once it cleared, they would send you your item which is just insane to think that we used to conduct business like this back in the day. So I bid on this uh, DVD player and I get it for $120. Those things are worth $7.50 right now. $120 for a DVD player. I write the check, I send it to him. Two weeks go, goes by and I never receive anything. So I send an email to the seller and the seller writes back, says, hey, I was on vacation. I'm sorry. I'm trying to fulfill some orders. I promise you, this is what they said, I promise you it'll be there in two weeks. So I believed them. I trusted them. What I didn't know is that extra two weeks put me outside the eBay guidelines to report a scam. So we got past that two weeks never heard for the seller again, and I lost my $120 of graduation cash that I worked so hard for, you know? <laughs> so here's the lesson I learned from that situation, and this might be the most important thing I tell any of you guys all morning long. Do not trust strangers on the internet ever. <laughs> never. No matter how nice they are in their emails, do not trust strangers on the internet. Now, I'm guessing... Uh, for so many of you, you've had a situation like this where you've just got burned by someone. You had a promise broken. Uh, maybe it was uh, from someone that was a complete stranger. Maybe it was from a loved one. But when we have these broken promises happen to us, when we get burned like this, we start to trust people less and less and less, right? And so that brings us for our series today. You promised in a world where everyone breaks their promises, we have a God who keeps his. Uh, now, before I get into this verse and I share about what the promise is for today, uh, there's something interesting about our promise for today. It is a conditional promise, which just means God will do something if we do something. There's God's part and that there's our part. Now, that might sound bad at first, but really most promises are like this. 
there's a condition to it. So let's say your buddy invites you over to help him move. And he says, I'll give you lunch if you help me move. That's a conditional promise. If you help him move, then you get lunch. If you don't help him move, he is not going to randomly show up on your door with lunch, right? It's a condition. You have to help him. That's, his, that's your part. And then he will provide lunch for you. It's a conditional promise. And that's the promise we see today from God. And so this promise, it is given to us by John. John is one of Jesus' closest friends, and this is what he says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So the promise today is this. If we confess, he will forgive. If we confess, he will forgive. So let's start with our part. If we confess. There's something really important when you think about confessing your sins to know. Everything that you do, everything that I do, any action that we take in this world, it is weighed. What do I mean by that? Um, Just imagine, just like any object, you can take any object, you can put it on a scale and you can see how heavy it is. God does the exact same thing with all of our actions. Everything we do, God can put it on a scale and he knows how good or bad everything that we do is. Some of the things we do are good, maybe even very good. Some of the things we do are Bad, maybe very bad, but here's the deal. God knows the weight of every single one of them. He knows the weight of everything that we do. When you go to the gas station, how you talk to the gas station clerk, God weighs that. What you do with your free time, God weighs that. How you spend your finances, God weighs that. God knows how good or bad everything is. Now, we might think that sounds harsh or just we don't like that at all, but when you realize that God is actually the foundation of all goodness, like nothing is good or bad without God. God is the foundation of all goodness. So when he looks at our lives and he sees what we're doing, it would be impossible for him to not weigh it. It would be impossible for him to not know if what we did was good or bad bad. So our promise today is if we confess, if we confess our sins, if we confess that bad stuff. Now the word confess, it just means to acknowledge or admit. So if you get really angry, you yell at your kids, confession is just acknowledging. It's just admitting that you were wrong to your kids and to God. Or if you fudge the numbers or maybe you lie Confession is just acknowledging or admitting to the person you lied to and to God himself. I like to think about confession as as this. It's like shining a light on our lives. Imagine like my kid, he comes up to me and he's like, hey, I I just cleaned my room. So I go down to his room. I walk into his, his room to see if it's clean. And what I realize is it's just dark in his room. Like there's no lights on. And my son, he'll look up to me and say, hey, dad, look, see, my room is clean. Well, when I look around, I don't see any clutter. I don't see any dirt. But it's not because it's clean. It's just dark. So what do you have to do? You flip on the lights, and then you get to see what's there. This is what confession is. It is turning the lights on in the room of our lives. It's seeing the clutter in the corner. It's seeing the unmade bed. It's seeing the 17 Stanley Cups on the nightstand. I'm not confessing my wife's sins. No, I'm not. I'm just kidding. She doesn't do that at all. But it is turning the light on in our lives and seeing the good and the bad, admitting it. Now, this whole idea about confession, it might feel, it might make us feel a little uncomfortable. You might be like, I don't like this. I don't want to shine a light on my life. I don't want to confess. But here, I'm going to tell you something crazy. You love to confess sin. You do. Every single one of us in this room, we love to confess sin. 
We just don't like to confess our sin. We like to confess our neighbor's sin. We like to confess our family's sin. We like to confess our spouse's sin. We like to confess our coworker's sin. We love to confess sin, just not ours. I live in T, and I'm a part of this Facebook group where you can imagine where this is going already. Uh, it's called T Connect, and it's where the people at T can get together and just talk about stuff that's happening in the town. Tons of great stuff on that group, tons of great information, and a ton of complaining. I mean, people are just calling out people left and right. They call out their neighbors. They call out teachers. They call out administrators. They call out bald pastors that are in that town, you know? And they call out people's pets. It's like, leave people's pets alone, right? There's a whole lot of calling out in that group. But we know that's not just T-Connect. That's all social media. That is our lives in general. We love to confess sin, just not our own. Here's the deal. God doesn't care what you think about someone else's sin. He's got that handled himself. He cares about what you think about your sin. What do you think about what is in here? Now, it's easy to confess others' sin, but it's so difficult to confess our own. I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. We hate, hate, hate to admit when we're wrong. One of the most painful things in the world to say is, I was wrong. That what I did was not good, or even to say what I did was bad. That is painful. Because we like to think we're better than we are. We like to think that we're more enlightened than we are. We like to think that we're wiser than we are. We can become so arrogant and so prideful and it is so difficult to just admit when we are wrong. Confession is painful, but it is so powerful. I mean, if you are here today and you're like, I want to get closer to God. I want to mature and become the man or the woman that God has me to be. I want to take steps towards God. I feel stuck right now, and I want to take a step towards God. There is nothing more powerful than you can do than confess your sin. Confessing it opens us up to so many things. It opens us up to aligning us with the truth. So we can get so deceived by falsehoods, right? And when we confess, we put ourselves back on that straight line to what is true. It opens us up to change. Confession, it opens us up because we think we're better than us. But when we confess ourselves, we humble ourselves and we realize we're not that good and it opens us up to be changed by God. It leads us to healing. If you want to be healed, you have to first admit that you're sick, right? You have to first admit that you aren't well. So the first step to that is confession. And it restores us with God. When you confess your sins, you put yourself on the same page with God. And it restores your relationship. You know, we say a lot from up here, like if you want to grow in your walk with the Lord, you should read your Bible, you should pray, you should serve others around you. And those things are all great. But I don't know if there's anything more powerful that will grow you in your relationship with God more than just confessing your sins. To God, but also to others, to other people that follow Jesus. I know some of us, we've maybe done this a lot before. We just say, God, forgive me for this, forgive me for this, forgive me for this. And that is great. I'm not diminishing that. But something else happens when we confess it to another believer. When we tell another person, I did this, I'm struggling with this. If you really want to take leaps forward in your walk with Christ, start doing that. So that's our part. If we confess, now to God's part. I just want to read this verse again. 
if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So if we confess, God promises two things. He promises us forgiveness and he promises us purification. So it's like confession is this key that opens this treasure treasure chest. It opens us to God's purification and his forgiveness. Now, those two things are different, though. They are not the same thing. Uh, Forgiveness means to let go or to send off. So I like to imagine, you know, we we live in South Dakota. It's like the most windy place in the entire world, right? I mean, the wind just blows. And this, this spring, the wind has blown so much. So I just want you to imagine you're in a South Dakota, you're out in the prairie, and the wind is just blowing like, blowing like crazy, right? And you bend over, and you pick up a few blades of grass, and you let them go into the air. What happens? They're gone. So beautiful. This is what God does for us. When we confess our sins, he puts it into the air, and he lets it go. And they are gone. If we confess, he will forgive. Now, I know there's some of you here today, and you're like, man, I've got a past. I've got stuff that I've never shared with anybody. I've got stuff I've stuffed down. I've got stuff that I've numbed away. I'm pushing it down. I'm hiding it away. And you need to hear this promise today. If you confess it, He will forgive it. Do you want to feel forgiveness? Do you want to feel the weight? Some of you came in with 100-pound weights on your shoulder this morning. Do you want to feel the release of it? God promises you, if you confess it, he will forgive it. He's not like your buddy. He's not like your friend that breaks promises. He keeps his So forgiveness, he also promises to purify us. Purify means just to to clean. I'd like to think of like if I I was to give my kid like a a white t-shirt, right? A brand new white t-shirt, which is a bad idea in the first place. But they go outside, right? And they roll around in the mud and the dirt and they just stain that shirt up and they come inside. It would be one thing for me to forgive them for getting the shirt dirty, it'd be another thing altogether to take the shirt off of them, clean off the dirt and the mud and the stains, wash it, and give it back to them clean, spotless. That's what God is promising us. If you confess your sins He will purify you. He will clean you. He will make you new. This past Sunday, we did like 200 some baptisms. Have you ever wondered why in the whole history of the church, they use water for baptism? Because when you come out of the water, you're clean. You're new. You get a fresh start. I mean, I know some of you are just sitting here, you're like, I'm too far gone. I've got too much stuff in my past. I feel dirty. I feel used. I feel like damaged goods. And you need to hear the truth. If you confess it, he will make you new. He'll put a clean white shirt on you. You will be made new in Christ. And will everybody else see it? No, they won't. Some of them will still think you're messed up. Some of them will still think you're damaged goods or you're no good. But it does not matter what they think. It matters what God said. And he said, if you confess it, he will make you new. So how does he do this? I mean, this sounds way too good to be true. It's like we can make a bunch of mistakes and then we just forget forgiven. How does God do this? Well, we just have to go back one verse to what John says in the previous one. The blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. It might be easy to think that you are forgiven because God loves you, 
It might be easy for us to think that we are forgiven because God cares about us or that he wants us best. That is not the way that you are forgiven. We are forgiven because of a man that lived a sinless life. He went up a hill, he was hung on a cross, and he died on the cross for our sins. You are forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ and that alone. His sacrifice secured this promise. If you confess, you will be forgiven. His sacrifice secured that for us. It did. Now I know so many of you still, you're like, You don't know how far I went. You don't know what I did. There are things that I did that I can't even begin to even think about. I get it. I've talked with people that have had things like that. But here's the deal. This is what you need to hear. You are thinking too much about your sin and not nearly enough about his sacrifice. It does not matter how great your sin is. It matters how big his sacrifice was. We focus too much on our sin and not nearly much about the great sacrifice that Jesus made for us. His sacrifice secured this promise. If you confess, he will forgive. Now, I just have to say, there is no way it would be impossible to confess every sin that you and I have ever committed. I mean, we commit sins all the time that we don't even know about. There's so many sins that we couldn't even remember them all. There's no way. Like, God... But here's the deal. God is not looking for us to confess every sin that we have committed. He is just looking for a heart that is willing to confess it. He's looking for a heart that's open to confess. So that's the question I want to leave you with. Are you open to confess? Is your heart willing to say, this wasn't good? God, I confess it to you. So that's our promise for today. If you confess, he will forgive. I just invite you to write this down, take a picture of it, whatever you need to do to get this in your brain. Because the moment that you and I leave this place, shame, guilt, People, all the voices will take over and you will start to believe that you're too far gone. You'll start to believe that there's nothing you could do. You'll start to believe that you're too dirty, that you're used. And we have to remember this promise. If we confess it, he will forgive it. In a world that breaks their promises all the time, we have a God who keeps his So as we close, I want to give us an opportunity to do this. I want to give us an opportunity to confess things in our lives. And so I'm going to pray, and I'm just going to say the first part of this promise, and then I'm going to give you 30 seconds to confess your sins. Don't worry, you don't have to come up here. front. Let's do it in the quietness of your mind. You might need to confess something for 30 years ago, three years ago, three days ago, three minutes ago. I don't know what it is. Shine a light on it. And then after that, we're just going to believe God that he can forgive it, that he can purify it, that he can make us clean, that he can make us new. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, who is the one who has secured this promise for us. 
The only reason we can believe this promise is because of what Jesus has done for us. And we thank you for your son. So right now, we just use this opportunity, Lord. And this might be one of the most brave things that anyone has done. Just to confess our sin to you. We confess it, Father. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to purify us from all unrighteousness. So right now, God, we believe you. Help us to feel new. Help us to feel clean. Help us, or actually, You remove from us the weight that we've been carrying, God. I just pray in the name of Jesus that so many of us would be set free from our pasts, from our sin, and know with confidence that if we confess it, you will forgive it. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey everyone, it's Adam from Embrace. If you enjoyed today's message, make sure to subscribe to Embrace's YouTube channel to stay updated. You can also click here to check out other videos. Thanks for watching.